So now, guys, just give me a thumbs up in the chat that we're live on YouTube. That way I know as well. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Well, first of all, guys, welcome to the opening session of uh, Beginner to Appointment Setup um mastery this is going to be a very very informative um you know master class that we're going to do and it's going to be over a couple of sessions as well so it's going to be exciting times uh it's not it's going to be very interactive so those of you guys that are on the call over here right now we have wilma we have Ma muhammad walid um Mewish, Michael, Bilal, Antoinette, Alsawi, Vanilla. Vanilla was one of the first ones on the call as well. So well done. Yusuf, Lily, and Jabran, myself. And we have Stephen Sambo in the waiting room. We did say 1516 uh, was the last time that you can be. Oh, there's a couple of people coming in the waiting room, but they're, on, they're, they're late. Uh, actually, I'll let you guys decide. These guys are late for the interview. So let's just say this was an interview, guys. And we said you have to join. At 3.15, what does the normal person do? What time would the normal, well, not normal person, the professional, what time would the professional be ready for the interview, the call, or whatever it is? Yusuf, you've got your hand up, so I'll let you answer. Yeah, I would say, obviously, they are a little bit late, but only slightly, so maybe you can let them off. So oh, you're being nice. Uh, Lily said they need to be ready 10 minutes before. Lily was ready 15 minutes before. So was Vanilla. Is it is it Vanilla? Uh, am, I say, am I pronouncing it right? Yes, you got that right. It's Vanilla. Vanilla nice. Yeah. Uh, and who else? Saeed was nice and early as well. And I think it was Marish as well. So well done. Well done, guys, for being on time. Uh, everybody else, uh, you're going to have to plug in from the YouTube channel, guys. So uh, you guys are the chosen ones. As you guys know, and I know, Antoinette, I know you're traveling, but you have plugged in. Uh, hopefully, you'll get your camera on and you'll be settled in at home as soon as. Uh, but that's fine. I know you do a lot of work, so um, you're fine there. And I know you'll be at home soon, and that will be fine. But okay, everybody else, I I'm glad that you guys are on time. Just so you guys know, there's all of you guys are the chosen ones. You guys are the chosen ones that I'm going to be working very closely with especially for these next few days. So you guys you guys have the opportunity to, and I'm going to make a note of, uh, actually, Yusuf, can you take a picture of everybody on the screen? Because I'm only going to be sharing the private link with you guys. But everybody else on YouTube, I'm, I'm going to be paying close attention to the comments in the YouTube section as well uh, for, for, for a, a, anyone that's plugging in live on YouTube. Because I know some people can't plug in live on the Zoom call and they're listening. Some people are at home with their kids. Some people are out. So I will be uh, keeping a close eye uh, on the the YouTube channel comments, etc. Those those guys that are engaging uh, and uh, and listening and learning, and I'll and I'll do something with you guys as well. But uh, but on that note, guys, I just want to get get this cracking. Like, look, this is gonna be a fun, interactive. Uh, some some of it's gonna be tough love as well. But I'm going to try my best to duplicate myself onto you guys as much as possible with all the experiences and the learnings that I've done, you know, in the last 20 plus years. Uh, but also my time in the high ticket space for the last four years and give you guys everything that you guys need or as much as what I know. So you guys are well prepared, you know, uh, for this journey ahead. Now, look, remember, uh, you know, the first thing that I'm going to tell you guys is treat everything professionally. Now, look, I'll give you an example. Now, you guys know that I like to be kind of casual as well. Literally, just before this call, all my one-on-ones that I was doing with all my one-on-one -on -one clients, I was in my basketball jersey. My basketball jersey. I literally, because I, I like it, and I and I had my snapback on, and I, and, and, I was doing, and I was doing my calls in that. But I thought, you know what? Because I told these guys to turn up smart, turn up, you know, professional. How you do anything is how you do everything. You know what? I'm going to whack on a shirt as well. So I put on my beige shirt and my beige t-shirt. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make it a, make it, make a good effort as well. But just so you guys know, below this, I've got my joggers on. But look, so long as you can see this, but you can do this on interviews as well. But then again, 
uh, they may tell you to stand up to just check because a lot of people do that. But look, at least I'm presenting from what I can, what you guys can see. I, I'm, I'm being professional because you guys don't know. Remember what I said to you? There's going to be clients. I have hundreds of clients that are on my YouTube channel that are going to look at this even a year, two years down the line as well. So you guys better make sure from tomorrow, you guys are turning up smart. And look, you look professional. Now, big up to Lily, who told everybody to wear the headsets or buy headsets. And everybody, well, not everybody, quite a few people have got headsets. We've got three people. Look at that, Lily. They're coachable, which is which is very good to see. Um, now, look, this I want this to be as, as engaging and as helpful to you as possible. There's so many people in the waiting room, uh, by the way, guys, but they're not going to be let in. I don't even know who's in there, but I'm just going to cross it. Um, but look, like, uh, as I said, they, they, for whatever reason, they missed the opportunity. And that's life sometimes as well. It is life. Like sometimes, I don't know, like maybe they were all ready to come on on, on, on time um, and, and they just missed the boat. But it's look, it, it is it, it is what it is. Uh, right now, you guys are here and I want to give my undivided attention to you guys. Can you let my device to enter? Uh, Walid, where's Walid gone? Uh, Walid, but you're already on the call. What do you want about? What device? Okay. Anyways, um, so so yeah, so 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 guys, any questions that you have? Any questions? There's no device, or that's going to be added on Walid anyway. If you want the recording, it's going to be on YouTube. Uh, uh, mobile phone. I have some issues. Can you can you hear me clearly, Walid? Okay, that's fine. Can you speak? Were well, you only typing? Can you not speak? Oh, Walid! No, I can't speak. No, you can speak, but your your mic or not's not hearing, right? Not not working. Okay. Uh, cool. Then you should have just plugged in. For, uh, uh, okay, no worries. Um, well, anyways, everyone's fitted on the screen anyway. No worries. If you want to say anything, but look, you should have. We we had this issue yesterday. You should have got it addressed by today. Anyways, never mind. Uh, if I were you, I would have gone to the I don't know the phone shop or whatever and just got a gaming headset like Saeed. Look at Saeed. Saeed is ready. Saeed is ready with the lights on as well. And maybe I'm going to get one of them as well. Um, and Bilal, Bilal's got his headsets on as well. Al Sawi, where's your headset? You're a gamer. Where's your headset? But don't you have like that that big one? I prefer these, man. The big ones. I don't know. I just oh, don't like. Oh, like okay, okay. Ones. Obviously, they get you. They they ruin your hair. With me, I don't have that problem. So, <laughs> uh, me and me and uh, Yusuf, we're okay. Okay, good. So, guys, I want because look, all of you guys are going to be on different levels. Uh, and this is good for everybody that's watching on the that's going to watch the YouTube live stream later as well. Everybody is on different levels, so uh, and and you're gonna you're gonna they're gonna learn from different people as well. And and the way I work with maybe Lily is going to be different to the way I work with Michael. But like I want everyone to pay close attention to what I'm saying, with whom I'm saying, and and why am I saying it. Because a lot of you guys are going to learn from each other as well. Like, look at the first thing I said about just just uh, turning up before your time. This is something that I learned from my dad. If you're on time, you're late. If you're on time, you're late. Because he used to get so angry when we used to be late. I used to be like, oh, my God. Or, like, he used to get really angry with me if he'd given me a time and I've come home late. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> I'd get disciplined. So that And, and for me, I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure... I'm always at least a minute or two or three before the time I'm meant to be home. Because obviously, like, if I if I had to come home for 7 p.m., and obviously I'm playing outside, so I want to make the most of playing outside. But the moment I know it's coming near uh, 7 p.m., uh, and, and I'm, like, down the road, I'll be running. Just so, because if I come home at 7 or 1, oof, I'm, I'm getting it. Um, so I used to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm on time for that. And that was from when I was young and that was drilled into me anyway. Or like when my dad was going out somewhere or whatever, if we're going out at a certain time, he'd go out and go into the car. And like for me, we'd, we'd know we'd have to quickly rush out. Otherwise, dad's going to go. So for me, these little, little things uh, were was, was something for me that really taught me about, you know, uh, discipline and being on time, I learned so many things from my dad, which I'm going to be teaching you guys as well. 
Um, so yeah, so look, uh, the first thing that I taught you was time. You need to be on time, guys. You need to be on time before the time for anything because that's your first impression. Imagine you come up to an interview. If you come up to an interview and you're, you, you're rocking up late, it's already coming up on the wrong foot. Now, not only that, you need to be prepared. Let's just say the environment that you're in right now as well. Like, what about your light, lighting, your camera, your internet? Make sure everything was on point. I remember like sometimes when I was having internet issues, I remember when I was in Pakistan, actually, and I was in the village, I was like, oh my God. But like, I, I, I and I was doing, the, the first time I was doing like a YouTube live stream or, or a Zoom call. No, it was a live Zoom call, actually. It wasn't a YouTube live stream. It was a live Zoom call. And I remember I'm, 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 I play, I, I put my, I get a laptop and everything. I bought a brand new laptop and everything. And I thought, you know what? It would be good connecting to the Wi-Fi. And, and then all of a sudden, it's not connecting. I'm having Wi-Fi issues, et cetera, and whatever. And I was like, oh my God, I'm glad this has happened now. Imagine I was, I was trying to do work uh, there. So, and then it, it taught me to have multiple internet connections, whether it's a phone, whether it's a, a computer. And then I remember trying to connect my laptop to my phone's um, um, internet. And it wasn't, it was, it was playing up. And then somebody told me, you're, you're better off going live on your mobile phone or, or using your mobile phone's internet because the computer can't handle the bandwidth or something like that anyway. I don't understand it, but I was like, okay, all right, cool. That's what I learned from that. And, and 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 it's you want to you want to make sure that you learn from these experiences. So that's the other thing. So, but before I start, guys, there's going to be some corrections that I'm going to be making with certain people, and and you know I'm going to be pointing out some people over the course of the next live streams. And don't be offended if I pick on you uh, and we correct things or whatever. It's it's going to be a bit of tough love. I'll rather me correct these things with you now as opposed to you guys continuing to make these mistakes and then you know not get to the desired destination that you want to get to now i had lily lily uh, lily was the first person that we spoke to yesterday uh, uh, currently looking for a dm phone setting role after having back going back and forth with conversations with lily i feel like lily is more than ready and more than qualified to land a dm setting role because look what do you need to be a good DM setter? Well, your communication and uh, you need to be able to communicate clearly. And of course, uh, in English, which majority of us uh, have to communicate with. So that's, where, you know, and it's a DM setting is only over text. So your grammar and your English needs to be professionally. And, and I know Lily can communicate well and even over the phone as well. So she's looking for a DM setting role and a phone setting role. In my opinion, she's more than ready. Now it's just about, so for Lily, now, Lily, how long has it been since you've been looking for a role? Well, uh, it is it is, it is a long time because I landed uh, a role in January and then uh, again in February, but I didn't stay long on the, on those roles. Mm. You know, it didn't turn out the way uh, it looked. Sometimes, you know, uh, offer owners, they're just very ambitious and uh, which is all mm. right, but then they're not ready to to launch their business or whatever. And, you know, we get the, the other end of the stick or whatever, but, you know, it's fine. And sometimes the offers are not what they make themselves out to be as well, which is which is unfortunate, but it's OK. But look, Lily, in my opinion, you're, you're overqualified to be a DM seller. <laughs> so so no, honestly, in terms of. You know, uh, from what I've seen on the calls, from what I've seen on the calls, it should give you confidence. And look, uh, I'll be the first person to tell you that you're not ready if you weren't ready. So like from from speaking to you and, and communicating with you, you can do the, the job well. Now it comes to the other characteristics. Is Lily going to be hard working? Is Lily going to go above and beyond the call of duty? That's the next thing that I'm going to look for, isn't like Because I know you're coachable because you've been coachable from the sessions that we've been having. So I know that. Now I'm looking at the next part, and this is what other recruiters are going to look for, guys. Is this person going to be able to do, go above and beyond the call of duty? Are they going to be hardworking? Are they going to be able to put in the hours? And this is another thing that you want to ask yourself as well. How can I project this to them? 
what examples of my life or, 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 or you know, my work experiences can I give these guys to let them know that, you know what, I can I can do all of this. So, Lily, well, let's start with you, actually. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about, you know, you specifically, not your experiences, as in you. Why should we hire you? Hmm. Whilst Lily well... is thinking about that, guys, I want <laughs> everybody else to be thinking about the same question. Like, why should I... And, and, and look, I'll give some context to this as well, and I'll help you answer this as well. Remember when, whenever you're at an interview, whenever you're at an interview, you know, all like, look, me and Imran have these conversations all the time because we're always hiring and, and building teams, et cetera, and whatever. And like, we just look like, is this person, you know, is he, gonna be a, is he or she going to be a good fit in the team? That's the first thing. Like, are they going to be cool to work with? So are you coming across someone that's, cool or at least someone that's going to fit in the team culture or like are, are you just like i don't know uh imran will uh, shed more light into like the weird people that he's spoken to but i'm, I'm not going to talk about that right now but like so are you coming across someone that's you know likable that's the first thing is this person coming across likable are they going to be a good fit that's like the surface level but then let's get like okay in terms of the person for the job they just want to know, can this person do the job effectively and above and beyond what we want them to do? Uh, and like, they just want to know this. So when they're asking you these questions, they just want some confidence in you. They just want to see some confidence from you in terms of, like, oh, can this person even do the job? Like, so when they're going to ask you these questions, you guys should already know who you are what you're about, look, who you are, what you're about, and what you bring to the table, and what you can do for them. These are just some of the questions that they're going to look for. Like, who is this person? What are they about? Why should I hire them? What can they bring to the table? And but more importantly, what can they do for my company? And the, you want to you wanna ask yourself, like, what am I going to say to give them confidence that I'm their person that they're looking for? It's what they're looking for. So now, hopefully, Lily's had a minute or so to think of what she's going to say. So, Lily, if I, you know, if I, because look, I don't really like asking this question, why should we hire you? But lots of people, they do. Like, why should we hire you? So I just, I just open up the floor. I'm like, look, just tell me a bit about yourself. And when I say, tell me a bit about yourself, you should tell them anyway. Like, and like a bit like how I done in my intro video on YouTube, how I would introduce myself, you know, for a high ticket sales role. Even that, it's not perfect, you guys. I literally, I wasn't even planning on uploading that video. Someone in the coach, in the closest university, oh, Jabran, like, how would you introduce yourself for a high ticket closing role? I was in Pakistan. And I was in, in the middle of my, like, uh, with my family and everything. I just went into the next door room door. I picked up the phone and I just started speaking. It was literally just off the cuff. I would change some things off it as well. But it's still better than most videos out there. Because in that video, I gave a brief, brief, well, not a brief, a good introduction about myself that I'm a seven-figure closer. Uh, you know, I, I've been the number one closer for Rudy Mawa and Kevin David. I've done hundreds of thousands of dollars consistently every single month. I've worked with some of the biggest names in the world. So I was telling them, and I mentioned some of the companies. I told them, that I'm, and then towards the end, I told them a bit about me. I'm hardworking. I'm coachable. I'm motivated. I can work any hours. I can do 12, 14, 16 hour shifts. I want to be the number one closer in the world. When, now, now, when I'm looking at this now, if someone's telling me that and they're actually, they're saying it with belief, the saying it is one thing, then I, then I, then you want to show it. Now, it's no point to say, look, and that's why, like, you know, when you're introducing yourselves as well, don't just say the words just for the sake of saying them. You really embody them and believe what you're saying and make them part of your DNA. Make them part of who you are. Like, um, you know, it's it's no point having all these motivational 
quotes and posting on Facebook and saying this and saying that, but like your actions are different or like how you're saying it. You know, like some people, like, like, like I'll give you an example and it's good job that I'm doing this before I'm asking you guys. So Lily, you can mute yourself for a minute and then you can unmute yourself and then, then, then you can answer it because I want to prepare you guys before I throw you in the deep end. So when someone's going to ask you all of these questions, guys, now imagine saying, oh yes, I am very motivated. I'm full of energy. I am. I would go above and beyond the call of duty. And I would be the hardest worker in the room. Look at that energy. Am I even, like, I'm not even putting life into the words that I'm saying, but there's no conviction. There's no belief. There's no energy in that. And everything is energy. Everything is energy. And, you know, if you're going to say, well, I'm not an excited person. I don't like being that loud. I'm not saying go put a mic on and go and shout on the top of your roof and say, oh, I'm this and I'm that. But at least put some energy and belief and conviction in what you're saying. So people believe what you're saying. Because let me tell you, people, they don't, they, they, they don't, they don't fully go by like, you know, what you say. It's, it's about how you make them feel. How you're making people feel no, because look, and if you're not doing a good job in this part, do you know what that's saying to people, especially in, uh, well, uh, uh, recruiters and hiring managers and business owners? Man, this person can't even sell themselves. How the heck are they going to sell my programs? I just told him to, you guys should be your best representatives of yourself. The best. Like nobody should be able to... And I guarantee you, I could probably sell, uh, well, that's just me. But I could, uh, like half the times when I get people to introduce themselves, I'm like, oh my God, I can introduce yourself better than, better than you can. But I'm a seasoned professional. I'm a seasoned professional. I look at the things and I, I get at everything. And then uh, it's like, uh, you know, on my, on, on my um, uh, some of my sales calls, like some people, like uh, there would be a part of the program would be that you get, you get uh, access to the Facebook group. So people were saying, oh yeah, we have a Facebook group that we can add you to. But guess how I was selling the Facebook group? You get lifetime access to our membership community, our private members community. Because it was a private members, uh, members group. Guess what? And then I used to also say to them, this, this membership community, this private group, it has, and it was Amazon, so it has experienced sellers in there. There are six, seven figure business owners. It has Kevin David in there, the influencer. There's our students in there as well. There's newbies, so so they can feel they can feel like they can relate to people because they're new. So there's new people in there. There's super experienced people in there, and there's people that are just starting out as well. You can learn, grow, and develop from all of these guys. As opposed to saying, oh, yeah, we give you access to our Facebook group. Can you guys see the difference? You can see what I'm doing here. It's about really promoting and selling who you are, what you are, and what they get in everything that you do. And it always, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm a motivated person. At least say it like you believe it. And then maybe give them reasons. What and I actually got a question from um someone. I remember on an application, like what what keep what keeps you motivated? Like someone asked me this question, interview, what keeps you motivated? I'm not I'm the definition of motivation. Like when you have a big reason why, as well as as big as I do, motivation comes naturally because I don't do what I do for myself, I do it for my family, my loved ones my friends, you know, my community. And I'm always adding to my reason why, because I'm doing it for those le far less fortunate than me. And I'm always adding to my reason why. I've, I've recently, I'm always getting involved in charity work, etc. cetera, whatever. I always, I want to make more to give more. That's my motivation. Because what I do is not only for myself. Now I have hundreds of orphans that I look after as well. So you best believe I need to make hundreds of thousands of pounds. 
as opposed to, yeah, I'm motivated. Give them reasons why you're motivated. But of course, you don't want to be like, you know, if they ask you one question, you don't want to be talking for so long as well. Like I gave a detailed answer just because I want you guys to understand. Like when when someone asks you about motivation, just give them a reason. I said like, yeah, well, how do I keep myself motivated? Because what I'm doing is to retire my dad. It's to retire my mom. It's enough motivation there in itself. That's why I will be the first one in and the last one out. That's why I will do more than everybody else. Is everyone getting me so far? Is anyone getting any value? Is it making sense, Bilal? You can just put your thumbs up, don't worry. Okay, awesome. So, um, Lily, why don't you give us a brief introduction as into why we should hire you? Not an introduction, just like Lily, why should we hire you as opposed to Mewish? Well, Jabran, I'm not quite sure you should at the moment. And I would like to have a genuine conversation and uh, see if the both sides have what it takes to get the job done, you know, to learn a little bit more about you, your business, your company, your culture. And then potentially we can talk about the next steps. However, I could say, you know, I am resourceful. I have an entrepreneurial mindset and I am very, very flexible adaptable as well i'm that person who will uh i'm that person who will give the most and uh who will help the most when it's needed right and uh, of course the feedback and uh, i embrace the feedback and the criticism those are my tools for growth thank you thank you very much that was a different answer it's it, it's actually it's not the way I would answer it, but then towards the end she gave she gave well it's it's really good anyway because like here's what I'm thinking the way Lily answered it you can tell straight away if if you're a sales manager be like okay I like this girl she 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 she's clearly experienced in sales oh I'm not sure I'm not sure you, you, you like what did you say repeat what you said at the beginning I'm not sure. You, <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet. If you, you should. Know, you should. If you should. Yeah, if you should. Right. Because we're not, we don't know if it's a match yet. But let me tell you a bit about who I am, first of all. And then obviously we can learn more about you. Um, but then some people, you know, you know, with this, like uh, if it was me, um, I'd be like, oh, okay. So she wants me to kind because, of, because, you know, this, the way you answer that, Lily, I'm not saying you should answer it like this all the time as well, because... Because remember, you can say the right things, but if it's to the wrong person, they're just not going to hire you. Honestly, <laughs> they're not going to hire you. So you need to ask yourself, am I going to do something that may piss them off or may tick them off or may get them annoyed or may something may get under their skin? Because they probably say to themselves, oh, wow, well, you want me to convince you that you need to work here? And like some of them, all of them, some of them, because honestly, I've had some great people go and interview for really good companies. But for some reason, they just, they never hired them. And they're like, oh, like we didn't like the way she answered these certain questions or we didn't like that. So I'm just like, cause, mm -hmm. cause you know, if you're not experienced enough as well, like, especially like, let's face it, just cause you're a sales manager, you're not experienced, you're a sales manager. Or like if you're a recruiter or even there's some business owners, they get it wrong. So I would rather do something that probably just keep... Now, it's different, don't get me wrong. Uh, and like, maybe you can add to it because I do like it because it's different. And you guys know, I like I like different. So you could be like, oh yeah, you know what? I'm not really sure you should, uh, if, if you should hire me. But from so far from what I've seen, I actually do really like you guys. Like, I love this and I love that. But let me just tell you a bit about myself and why you should hire me. Like and, and then you can be like, I'm this type of person, which you did anyway, which was a it was it was a good response. Uh, I just don't know if I should start off with the way you started it off. Maybe just trial it from right, removing it. I don't know. Uh, but it's a good way to do it on sales calls. 
like I don't know if we're gonna be a good match. Like I just because uh, because that's like you know some things that we do on sales calls as well and appointment setting etc and whatever. Like like what well, because well, you know some people say to you, oh, why should we hire you? So I do like I do like that answer, but I just feel like on an interview maybe it can go the wrong way. It has chances of going in the wrong way. That's all I'm saying. Um, but no, very good answer though, because you, you you gave a good good answer. Yeah, at the beginning, I will not recommend. If they ask this at the beginning, I will not recommend. Mm. If they ask at the end, uh, I would go with this. Then what, what if they'd be like, well, we've, ha we've just had a, like, a 30 minute conversation. I've told you all about my organization and everything and whatever. And they're thinking to myself, what, you still don't know whether you want to, why do you even apply to us if you don't know you want to work with us? That's what they may think. Like, are you telling me, <laughs> hang on a minute, you filled out a 20 minute application form. You saw all my company, you applied to work with me. And now you're saying, to, and you just spent 30 minutes. This is, this is another thing now. I'm glad you said that, Lily. <laughs> Some tough love coming your way now. So look, so Lily, you're saying to me, you just spent 20 minutes because we have a thorough application form that you just spent like 25 minutes filling out all these questions. Then you booked the time on my calendar to speak to me for 30 minutes. And on the 25th minute, you're saying to me, oh, I don't know if I want to work with you or you should work with me. They will get pissed. I'm, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be angry. I'll be like, hang on a minute. You applied to work with me. So you're saying to me, you don't even know if you want to work with me right now. Or if you should work with me. And then that's where, that's where like, you know, the 20, 30, maybe even 40% of managers will be like, um, okay, I don't know. Maybe not. So I, I don't know. Maybe just try taking it out of your book. Just, just okay. take it out and just sell on yourself. And I know it's weird sometimes, like talking about yourself and and all that. But look, it's something that we have to do. Like I'll be honest with you, with me it was very cringy at first. Oh, like I'm the not because look, everyone says, oh, I'm the number one this and I'm the number. One. I'm like freaking. I was though. I was consistent. I was consistently and not only in high ticket sales. Every single company I worked with, like there's a company called W H Smiths in the UK is the company I spent the most years with. My results, now, and they used to be 30, 40, 50, nearly 100 employees sometimes working in the, in, in the store. And my results were beyond everybody's results. I was consistent, not only the number one performer in my company, not in my, the, the store, but the company nationwide. No, like they would be stores a whole store with multiple people working there and their result, they wouldn't close as many sales as much as I did. And I have, I've worked, I've worked abroad overseas as a holiday rep and I, I, I would, I would close more than everybody on my team ever, consistently. So I've been a consistent top performer, but I've got proof to back it up and all of that as well. So I, I like, I like, because you know, with me, I like my results to do the talking. But then when it comes to interviews, and especially when you're going for higher roles and you want to negotiate higher pay, you need to let them know that you're not speaking to no, so nobody average. And this is where I want you guys, guys, pay close attention to what I'm saying as well. I want you guys to know that you're not average. You guys are now connected with me. You're not meant to be average because I'm not average. I need you guys to study everything I'm saying so you become the above average. And you now demand more from yourself. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to figure this out because right now I'm working with one of the best closers in the world. Like, you know, with me, alhamdulillah, I've, like, I, I think I went through all my trials and tribulations and failures and setbacks and everything for the last 20 years right for this. I, I have got over eight to 10 years in recruitment. I've got nearly 15 years in management. I've been a teacher, mentor, and coach for years before now I'm doing this. And I've got like 20 years in sales. Plus, nearly 25. 
So I've done all, and, and, and I didn't, I didn't make a lot of money, but I learned a lot. So I did all my learning there. And guess what? I did my earning in high ticket sales. That's why like within, 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 within months, I made more than what people were making in three, four, five years. I made in a single month. But I did all my learning then. And that's what's going to happen right now with you guys. There's going to be learning. Like even right now, like the way I corrected with Lily and everything, everybody should take that on board. Everybody. So when you're talking about yourself, you really want to sell yourself. So, to, to, so for today, and I'm going to give people homework. Everybody should watch my intro video. And I want you to say, it's on the YouTube channel as well. You should, you're all subscribed to it, so you should see the YouTube video. I want you to go there, and I want everybody to leave a comment on, on the video about what you got from it. Like, oh, uh, maybe even you put your intro just in few words. Oh, thank you. Like, you know, just, just be like, oh, uh, whatever for the video. But then I want you to put your... Um, about yourself give me some some positives about you put it in the video and I'll, I'll look at the comments on there as well on on the video so maybe have a brief introduction of yourself on that video that way i know especially you guys and that and anyone on the youtube live stream you guys can go ahead and do that as well and then I, maybe i can give some feedback etc or whatever on there as well so that's what i want people to focus on to begin with to focus on to begin with, to, to look, make sure you're turning up professional. You're turning up professional. You're in a professional environment. And maybe even like Saeed, if there's possible for you, maybe get yourself against a plain wall as opposed to having the wardrobe in the background, etc. Like even mine is not great, it was perfect. But you know, when I was taking my sales calls, I think it was, in, no, it was from that couch first. It's crazy. Like if you look at the, the, the couch in the background, that couch wasn't even my couch. I borrowed it from my sister. Well, she was putting it. So I think she was getting rid of it or she was selling it. I was like, give it to me for free. I'll put it in my, it'll put it in my house. Well, this house is like, this house wasn't even my house. Man, if I tell you guys the environment that I had to figure things out in, like I, I've been there where you guys are at right now. I swear to God, I've been there. Like even now, like I have all the brand new stuff of like all the cameras and everything. I don't even have to figure them out. I have them sitting there. I haven't even used them because I don't even, I'm terrible with te uh, technology. But like I have told many of you guys on like many of the live streams before, I used my brother's old laptop, not even his laptop that he was using, his old laptop that was all slow and everything. And I used that to make more than a quarter of a million. I used my parents' Wi-Fi. Because I didn't want, I don't want to pay for Wi-Fi in my house. Because I live next door to my parents, I use my parents' Wi-Fi, my sister's table, my sister's couch, my sister's house. Whatever, I use everybody else's things to make money. But that's why I give back to a lot of my siblings now as well. So it wasn't easy for me. I remember at one point, like you know that the, the room that I was in, it had a bathtub in the corner. Imagine. If you can be on a sales call and there's a bathtub in the corner, like it was crazy, but you guys learn from this. But for me, at one point, I started enjoying having the bathtub, but I don't recommend you guys to do this because I was like, I want to have the worst, uh, uh, like not, not even the greatest of looks. And I was like, oh yeah, it's it's a bathtub. But, um, and, 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 and I wouldn't even come up to my sales call smart. So I was doing weird stuff though, because I wanted to see how good are my sales skills by just by my conversation and my words how much are they going to be sold because I, I like i do weird things to challenge myself so i put myself like okay rather than wearing because i started off wearing shirts and everything then i was like now nah, screw it i'm just gonna wear, wear a baseball cap or a baseball top or a cap or whatever because i wanted to see how much of my sales skills improved verbally that they're gonna, and how good are my people skills that they will still buy from me. Alhamdulillah, like, every, and, and they did. But I don't recommend everybody over here doing that right now. Let's get you to 10 grand a month or whatever it is that your goal is and you're, you're, you're solid and everything. Uh, but even look, now I, I'm, I'm in a shirt right now because uh, you need to, you should be professional. How you do anything is how you do everything. So I wanna be an example 
of that as well. So, okay, we've, we've figured out, okay, in terms of your intro, that's one of the first things that I want people to work on is your intro. Make sure you watch the video so you've got a brief idea of it and see how, what I can get from that video and talk about myself. And I've just given you a, a brief of like what I want you guys to talk about is yourselves. Yourselves, a brief introduction as in why we should hire you. Like why you as opposed to anybody else? Um, and when they ask that question, you tell them who you are. Like, what do you stand for? Like Bilal, why don't you unmute yourself? Bilal, tell me a bit about yourself. And like yourself. You need to start talking though. Your mic not working? Can you hear? Or well, you need to speak first. Yeah, your mic's not working. Oh my god. Imagine Bilal, imagine you came to an interview like that. <laughs> try now. Try try some try talking. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Maybe come back next time for your interview. Okay, no worries. Don't worry. It just stopped working. But look, these are the things. These are the things that we need to work on. Saeed, why don't you unmute yourself? What are you doing, bro? Your mic is not working as well. Oh, my God. I can. Uh, Yusuf. How's your mic? I know you're in a cafe or something. Aren't you? you put your mic down. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, you can mute yourself. Uh, Yusuf, I think you need to change this mic though. You know why? Because I've just muted you. You can hear everything that's going on outside. So, so okay, maybe try now. You need to unmute. How is it now? Yeah, we can still hear outside. Don't worry, I'll mute you. Don't worry. Uh, so maybe this is not a good mic. This is not a good mic to, to be using because maybe it will catch things from outside and whatever, especially if you're working in a cafe. Uh, this is going to try pulling it back. Noise cancellation on the whatever. Okay, you've got you've got other things as well, which is good. Uh, Vanilla, why don't you unmute yourself? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Nice and clear as well. Vanilla, why don't you introduce yourself to us? Tell us a bit about yourself. Who Vanilla so, is. Hi, guys. Vanilla this side. So I've been a setup for like five months in, in this industry, like sales industry. And just something about me that just got me into sales is uh, I'm very driven and very sales oriented. Like I am very driven when I have like a particular goal ahead of me. So if you're looking for somebody that's reliable and who wouldn't shy away from going an extra mile, whether it's putting extra extra time or like going through the pipeline, making sure like we get the old, old leads in and making sure we hit those daily, daily targets, then I would like the chance to discuss further. I'm the person for, for you to reach out to and... I would like to right. that's, that, 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 yeah. that's good. That's good, Vanilla. So look, Vanilla, you made some good points, but we need to get solid on these. We need to get really clear because you did say that, look, if you're looking for someone that can do this and do that, that's good. But we just need to get it clear and concise and say it straight away. Not like in just be around the bush and be like, okay, if you're looking for this, obviously it's odd. like right now it's okay because I just put you on the spot, but it was good. You were telling me things that I wanted to hear. Uh, don't worry, guys. Uh, we are having issues. You don't need to explain the issues to me. I'm not going to you know, bite your head off or anything. Uh, that's fine. But you guys can see these issues. You can't have these. You cannot have these issues. Because straight away, they'll be like, because look, straight away, they'll, they'll be like, oh, how are they going to, how are they going to do my sales calls? If they, they can't even, they, they can't even speak. Clear. How you do anything is how you do everything. This is why we need to always be ready. Why do you think there's, you know, every now and again, we have so many upsets in, uh, let's just say, boxing. Like, they'll be like the underdog. Don't worry, Yusuf, you can put your hand down and we can come to you later. Like, imagine, like, like, uh, uh, like Anthony Joshua, for example. A few years ago, he was meant to be fighting somebody. And I think it was his first fight in the States. He was meant to be fighting somebody. But then that person got drug tested and he failed his drug test. 
So that person had to get pulled out. Anthony Joshua and his team and Eddie Hearn, the, yeah, Miller, they, they did all the promotions. They did all the promotions and everything and they come to America as well. And it was literally like fight week or like a few days away. And they got a last minute replace, replacement, Andy Ruiz. And to them, they were like, okay, yeah, he's got a good record. So on paper, Andy Ruiz looked. But if you saw Andy Ruiz in person, he was like very overweight. He was the fattest uh, professional heavyweight. Fattest. He wasn't... He wasn't muscular. He was very fat, overweight, obese. But his skills were great. He was Mexican. His skills were great. And he, he says to himself, I was fat. Uh, but his skills were great. And he was training like he was already in. A, um, he was already training as if he was fighting for a world title. So he was, he was in the gym. Now, even though he may have been fat and he looked fat, he was very fit. He was in the gym and he was very fit. And he get they team Ruiz gets a call like a week's notice. Hey, do you want to fight for the world titles? Not world title, world titles with Anthony Joshua. It's in a week's time. They were like a hundred percent yes. Now Team Joshua is thinking, oh, oh, look, this guy's is gonna be a walk. Like not even Team Joshua. Everybody globally, including myself, we were like, this is going to be a walk in the park for Joshua. It's going to be a walk in the park. But guess what? Now, it's hard for Anthony Joshua to adjust as well because he's been getting ready for this one guy who's tall, muscular and everything. And like, because when you're in training camp as well, you're getting ready for a specific opponent. But then now, last minute, they change the opponent. From there, he's gone there. And it's a total different fight. But this is why they say it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have it than have an opportunity and not be prepared for it. Now he has to change up his game plan, everything. But then also in the mind of everybody's, now I don't know if Joshua was thinking this, but everybody's, this guy is going to be a walk in the park because previously to that, Anthony Joshua was wiping the floor with everybody. He was knocking them out within a couple of rounds. Every Anybody he was hitting was going. So we all thought that Anthony Joshua was going to lose. I mean, when? This guy's going to lose against Anthony Joshua. But guess what happened? Because Ruiz was ready for his opportunity, not having it. He was already training for that world title fight. He was already training to win his world title fight. The moment the opportunity came in that fight, he knocks Anthony Joshua down. Well, he gets knocked down. Anthony Joshua gets uh, knocks him down. And then he just knocks out Anthony Joshua and he becomes the world world champion. Did he, was he, did he have the opportunity when he was training? No, he was training. He was going to the gym. He was attending trainings and coaching and everything like he was fighting for a world title. This is what I say to you guys. Imagine right now, guys, imagine right now. Someone says to you, hey, you, you can start working right now, this week. From tomorrow, you can land the role and start taking calls. But you have to do your interview and you have to pass probation. Who's ready? We can confidently say, I'm ready. I'm ready to be a DM setter. I'm okay, Wilma, perfect. Wilma's got a hand up. Well, I'm, I'm glad you have, Wilma. Uh, just so you know, guys, I love you all. I love you all. But I'm I'm gonna be that you know that you, everybody someone must have like a sibling that just tells you how it is, like you know that brother or sister or mother or father or whoever they are they just tell you how it is. If you're doing something wrong, they'll just tell you. So Wilma just said she's ready for a role this week. I like the confidence. So first of all, round of applause for Wilma for putting your hand up and be like, "Yo, I'm ready." So even on YouTube as well, give Wilma a round of applause. Wilma, unmute yourself, please. Now everybody's gonna learn from this. Uh, so Wilma, you're ready to start uh, the role of a uh, DM setter, did you say? Yes. It's pretty decent. Okay, cool. Uh, so tell us, why are you ready? Why do you think you're ready? Uh, well, I have six months experience as a DM setter. And uh, I think, uh, I not only think, I'm sure I have what it takes. 
I have interacted with people in the role of uh, DM setter and I am excellent with building rapport, creating deep conversations. And uh, it's not just my stint as an appointment setter, but I have also a lot of experience backing me uh, when it comes to customer services, sales, um, training, uh, you know, uh, presenting myself uh, in front of top management because I've got nine years of corporate work experience and I oh, have... Wilma, sorry, Wilma, just stop. Wilma, just stop there. Perfect. Look at look sorry. at how long it took you to tell us one of your biggest traits, achievements, characteristics or or something about yourself. One of your big wins, big wins. You just told me after about, I think, a minute of speaking that you've got nine years of corporate experience. You started off the call saying that the intro, that I've got six months. No, you've got years of experience in corporate doing X, Y, Z, or whatever. And for the last six months, I've been involved in remote high ticket sales as a DM setter. That's what you need to say. Because no one wants to work. Like, look, let's be honest. No one really wants to work with a beginner. Not everyone does. But then again, if they really truly understand the role of a DM setter, honestly, anyone can be a DM setter. So long as you can communicate in English clearly. And nowadays you have Grammarly as well. You can even, even if you can't communicate clearly in English, Grammarly will do it for you. So Wilma, we're going to work on this, but I, I, I want to be mindful of the time because I've got another call in literally a couple of minutes. But Wilma, we're going to come back on this tomorrow. But look, guys, hopefully you guys have got some sort of idea. And I want to pick up on this intro part again tomorrow because I really want to go over this with you guys. Uh, Vanilla, quickly. Yes, so I just wanted to also add on to that. So I just was wondering, how do you customize your intro or uh, we're gonna do that tomorrow. To we're gonna do, we're, yes, I yeah. So different any of your like questions, fitness. I want you to write them down, and we're gonna address okay. them tomorrow as well on the next God. on the next uh, live uh, YouTube. But you guys, you guys all, uh, Yusuf, you took a picture of everybody in there because it's gonna be you guys on the call tomorrow, and then because right now you guys are the chosen ones. People are paying me five thousand to ten thousand to work with them. You guys have got this for free. Just because I'm going to make a case study, everyone's going to know about you guys. So maybe count your stars. Uh, you all should believe in God because God is behind everything. So go thank God. Uh, do your prayers. And because I'm genuinely looking and I'm excited to help you guys. You guys need to be 100% on this. 100%. So go and study the, the intro video. Go, go make some notes about yourself. Uh, get your intros written down, etc. You don't need to be fully ready. Tomorrow, we're going to go over that in more detail, like one by one, and we'll go through that as well. I just look, even if I'm giving, and I'm not speaking directly to you, but I'm giving feedback to Wilma. Everybody else should take on this, take this on board. Oh, no, I don't only have six months of experience. I have over a decade of experience of many transferable skills in the corporate world. Appointment setting, what is it? Talking to people? I've been doing that for 20 years. Whether it's on the phone, text, messaging, all sorts, in person, all sorts. I can communicate well, except so I'm going to go through all of this with you anyways. But on that note, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you and I'll see you on the next one. You can all message me as well and then we can we can sort something out. Take care, guys. All the best.